Welcome on this beautiful rainy day in Durban. Some of us have experienced this sort of weird weather for the first time in our lives. But we shouldn't be complaining. Um, so, we're going to spend the next hour or so getting to know each other, getting to know your mentors, getting to know what you're here for and what the source of your problem is that brings you here. And we will then get down to the business of identifying the problem and finding the tools to solve the problem. So let, let me give you a bit of a background to how this initiative, uh, let's call it the Data Analytics Initiative, how it em emerged. Um, I should have said, actually, my, my name is Rabi Danpath. Uh, I am the Director of Teaching and Learning at UKZN. And I took up my post here in the year 2009. And one of my key responsibilities was to track student progression, to understand the phenomenon of exclusion, dropout, success, and performance. And it soon became obvious that my predecessors were attempting to solve these problems on the basis of hunches and anecdotes. And what we needed was a more systematic, evidence-based approach to addressing problems facing students. And fortuitously, at that point, I met Professor Victor Borden, who will introduce himself shortly, at a conference in the UK. And I asked if he would come over to UKZN to deliver a keynote address at one of our conferences. And since then, we've been working uh, together to develop tools to understand not just the phenomenon of student progression, but other higher education phenomena um, that's of interest to us and the broader academic community. During that period, I also had the privilege of meeting Randir, Professor Randir Rautlar, who had just moved in from UCT to join our chemical engineering school here. And he had already done some fairly sophisticated work on developing online analytical tools to track student progression and performance. And then, of course, my very old friend, well, he's not so old, but I've known him since we were, we were children, uh, and he is the eSkills director at Durban University of Technology. And so this team now has been able to um, envision the possibility of creating a new generation of data analysts amongst you. Um, we've already had a program which ran for two years, um, which ended last year, where 12 UKZN staff members have completed the, the course and they've, they've graduated from it. And so this is a, the next cohort, the next crop. And at some point, we'd like to have a community of scholars who will then become part, who will contribute to a center for data science, which we are launching at this university. So that's the long story. Um, Maybe I should pause there. Is there anything you'd like to know further about what I said and the context provided? Okay, we'll soon be asking you what the nature of your interest is. But before I do that, I should ask um, the mentors to say a word or two about themselves. My name is Victor Borden. I have a bit of a cold I'm recovering from, so I'm going to talk a little softly now to save myself for later. Um, I am currently a professor of higher education at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, the flagship campus, as we call it, um, and have spent uh, prior to that about 30 years or so working up my way up the institutional research ladder, directing offices, directing a system office, and then becoming an associate vice president in the administration. And all my work is about helping people at universities 
use data, use analytics, use analysis, whatever words they happen to be saying at this time, in this age, to do their work better, to, to achieve the objectives. A lot of the time it has to do with learning and student progress and achievement, but I've also applied it to research endeavor, to commuting patterns to the institution, to just about everything over the 25 years that I was doing that actively. These days I train new people, although in doctoral education, we tend not to call it train, I educate new people and have a lot of doctoral students pursuing PhDs in higher education and plug them in to universities' needs for data and research and analysis so they get hands-on experience actually doing that. It's been wonderful to get to know uh, everyone at UKZN over the last seven years. Gosh, it's been a long time. I think this is my fifth or sixth trip to UKZN. Um, but uh, I just came from Stellenbosch, uh, the opposite of UKZN, or the other end of the, uh, the other coast, the opposite in some other ways. But anyway, it was an interesting week, and it's great to be here. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Um, so Robbie has mentioned I'm uh, from a chemical engineering background. And uh, in fact, my interest in data science came about when we started modeling student behavior. So we started out with a kind of chemical engineering lens, looking at students as the particle and the curriculum as the reactor, and looking at how we could, uh, we could predict what students were going to do. And we found um, it was surprisingly accurate in some places, in some places. Um, in fact, the methods were, were quite effective and uh, I, I was struggling to understand why some of these things were working as they were. And uh, I did a year of sabbatical here and uh, when I ran into Rabi, um, I, was, uh, I was really encouraged by the, the engagement at UKZN with data and uh, with understanding students to that extent. Because in many places uh, you'll find that uh, everything is driven by, you can say, emotions or or biases that we have in, uh, in how these curricula work. So UKZN, uh, I was really impressed at the level of, uh, of dedication to analysis and real data analytics. Uh, so I, I joined here full time, you can say, from there. Um, so I, I guess uh, we are, as Rabi's mentioned, we are starting up this uh, center in data science. So we hope you'll participate in that center through the, the research that you initiate through this course. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, my name is uh, Colin Thakur, um, and I'm probably the most unstructured, unorganized, disorganized person you will ever meet. Not true. Um, I started my career teaching computer science and went to industry. I joined the sugar industry, uh, where we plotted data for every field in every sugar farm in every country in the Southern Hemisphere. So it was extremely exciting working in the Reunion and Mozambique and Triangle and places like that. And the product familiarity with sugar made me stop taking sugar in my tea. I then joined the, the dairy industry, and there I worked with manufacturing data, live data, 24-7 data. Once again, the product familiarity there made me stop taking milk in my tea. So I'm not joining SAB. The, the, I'm not joining SAB. It's too dangerous, right? So in my life, uh, I've worked with all kinds of data, and now I work with election data for many countries. I'll talk to you about that later. But um, my passion right now is unstructured data. So I hope to enthuse you about some unstructured data later today and tomorrow. And thank you and good morning. All right, let's, let's now get to know you a little. And I'm going to do it alphabetically. <laughs> so starting with the letter A, if your surname starts with A, tell us your name. Um, where you work, something about the discipline that you work in, and very briefly at this point, briefly because we're going to come back later and ask you to define the problem that you are here to solve. But tell us something about your interest in this course. I'm Andy Lakman Johnson. I'm from the Department of Economics, UKZN, Westby Campus. I'm running my PhD, and I'm focusing on data. Um, time series data regarding uh, macroeconomics uh, variables. My topic of research is about uh, exchange rate pass-through and domestic prices in oil-dependent economy, considering 
net oil exporters and net oil importers. So I want to look at uh, this uh, workshop that because of time series uh, data that I'm going to employ in my research work, I consider it to be a very good aspect of, towards uh, achieving my objective of the research. And I believe that as we progress in the um, workshop and the training here, that much will also be contributed to what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Chad Devrup. I work here at UKZN. I'm now 15 months old here, so I was just born last year in 1st of February. I'm the cluster leader for music. Um, so how did I get to this workshop? Well, one of my first students who happened to be my brother, he's also a professor at UNISA, and he went up to the University of North Texas, did a lot of work in quantitative analysis. So you can imagine the supper, at the dinner table in my home, there's this debate between him and myself. He's coming in with quantitative data, and I'm coming in with qualitative data. And in a field like music, that is quite problematic. So he's always arguing, show me the statistics, show me the figures. And I'm like, well, look, in music, we do things like this. And I give him my reasoning. So this tension, I felt, you know, we needed to resolve itself at some point. And when I arrived here at UKZN, I found that we have a very interesting repository of data tons of data, and yet it just sits in an archive which most of my colleagues in my sector don't even know exist. They seem to think that this is some kind of big stick that's going to be used against them at some point, not realizing how valuable this information is that could actually help them. So that's the reason why I'm here. Good morning. My name is Thev Gurea. I'm a staff member at UKZN. I'm in the Department of Occupational Therapy. I'm here because I'm doing my PhD, um, and I would like to know how to analyze my data better. My PhD, I've developed a um, six-week intervention for first-year health science students to see how well-being relates to their academic outcomes. Um, so I'm just here to learn and absorb as much as I can. Hello, my name is Richard Kunz. I'm a hydrologist. Also work at UKZN in Peter Maritzburg, so it's a good thing I got here with the traffic this morning. It was chaos. Um, I'm involved in climate change research, running uh, simulation models, hydrological and agricultural simulation models. I've got a wealth of data, both spatially and uh, time series, and uh, struggling to analyze it. Literally lost in the data. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. I'm Kemda Lionel from the Department of Smart Start and Computer Sciences at Westfield Campus, a PhD student. I'm here simply because um, I don't have a topic yet for my research, but I was given some data set with some variables, particularly about students' performances in school, at university level. So I was trying to see if it's possible to predict students' outcomes that's to see if students are going to graduate or how long they take to graduate. Or for those that take longer than one year to graduate, what, in fact, do some kind of classification to say, given a particular student, is he going to finish or not? There are many techniques that can be used to do this kind of research, but my interest recently has been on data analytics and machine learning. So I'm simply trying to see, is, there, is data analytics going to help me to achieve this kind of out or this kind of outcome that I'm trying, trying to find out. But right now, I have no particular topic, but I have some kind of interest in data analytics and see how these techniques can be applied to these kind of problems. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Prince. I'm also from the School of Accounting, Economics, and Finance. I'm a part-time lecturer in um, retirement planning and at um, Westville campus. I'm working on a topic called fractal market hypothesis, and I've seen someone use um, neural networks. And I, have, I reckon maybe I could also apply it, but I have no idea how it's uh, done. So I thought maybe I'll get some ideas here and possibly apply it in my research um, later. Thank you. Good morning, all. I am Adebo Ali Ojo. I am from um, the discipline of information systems. I'm a postdoc. Um, my research interest is in health information systems, um, but of late I've also been looking at um, social media data analytics. I'm looking at how we can harness the uh, social media data we have all around us and um, analyze them in order to bring out um, insights that 
could help uh, um, that could help institutions for whatever purpose they intend to use it for. Thank you. My name is Simone Takardin. I'm from the discipline of optics and imaging based at UKZN Medical School. Um, this year for my PhD study, I'm doing a genetics-based study and we're looking at uh, pregnancy-specific syndrome known as preeclampsia. Good morning, I'm Margaret Alishi. I'm from the Optics and Imaging Center, UKZN Medical School. I'm a member of the placenta research group and we are looking into preeclampsia. And um, I'm here because um, we always have reasons to use data and the analysis of um, solving problems that will come across on the field. So, and I'm not um, so good with data analysis. So I hope this um, workshop will help to improve my knowledge. Thank you. Good morning. We actually work with patient data vis a vis uh, some analytes, especially in cell signaling pathway, apoptotic uh, pathways. And so we normally try to actually integrate the patient data with some of these analytes that we actually are And so I've been looking for some short courses online that could be of help. So when I came across this, I think that. Uh, Actually, they brought it right to my doorstep, so that's why I'm here. Hoping that at the end of this week, uh, I will have a lot, not only for myself, but for other people around. Thank you. Good morning, all. My name is Titi Lodi Kuzwa from the uh, University of Ivana. I have a complicated background. I'm a UK second doing my postdoc. Uh, my area of research is on uh, artificial reproductive age and the maternal challenge. Uh, I've been working with data, but uh, I don't know how to use a structural equation model. I thought uh, this uh, workshop can um, capacity in that uh, regard. Um, so good morning. Uh, my name is Serena Ramklas. I'm from the um, School of Clinical Medicine on the Nelson Mandela uh, campus. I am the academic leader for teaching and learning in the school. I'm here today because I'd like to, um, or for the week rather, to improve my skill in data analysis. I'm particularly interested in uh, student performance, in throughput, <coughs> in terms of time to degree. Um, and in particular, I'm wanting to um, research uh, um, a particular cohort of students um, uh, that derive from Quintile 1 and 2 schools, which is an under-researched uh, cohort at our campus. So um, I'm wanting to use the institutional data to see how far and what results we can actually achieve from that. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Efrain Zulu. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Construction Studies and uh, the School of Engineering. I am researching on uh, developing a curriculum specific to engineering education by trying to identify antecedents to effective teaching and learning, which I am getting from different uh, theories of learning. My interest in the module is that I hope it will help me analyze my, my data, uh, but also generally I love all kinds of uh, quantitative data analysis. Hi, I'm Rapasana Singh from the School of Information Systems at Westmore Campus. I'm here to understand how to better use data that we have on Moodle. Uh, we have a lot of student data that is collected. Specifically, uh, I've been doing online assessments in Moodle for the past three years with our students. We have large numbers of students, especially at first year level. So, um, yeah, I want to understand better how to use the Moodle data to improve student performance and understanding students' usage of work. Good morning. My name is Kechi <coughs> Nebo. I'm a baby doctoral student. I just started. And um, my interest is on the effects of capacity constraints on the throughput quality of the honors student in the university. And the aim of my study is to establish the effects of bottlenecks in terms of staffing institutional resources, technology, and cycle time. And 
I really want to know how to analyze my data later. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Mazi Sarasova from Wesley Campus. I'm from Computer Science School of Mathematics, Statistics, and uh, Computer Science. Our uh, area of specialization is uh, optimization and model. Actually, it's a long time I've been, you know, striving to make sure that things that have to do with, uh, you know, data science, uh, I have some graphs of it to make use of it in my work. Because um, I discovered that, most especially in this area of um, the hearing, uh, many methods have been applied to see how it could be taken care of. And also this text summarization. You know, but I discovered that um, some intelligence, you know, many of the algorithms are used to be applied in those areas. And those, that's the area I specialize in computer science. So, I'm here to actually see how I can get knowledge of this uh, data science and apply it in my area of specialization to see how I can from the health institution and any other organization that may be interested in making use of my area. My name is Yvette Defia. I am currently doing uh, some medical research with Medicaid in, in conjunction with a medical school. We currently work on a study called REVAM, which is resistance testing versus adherence counseling for the support of patients on antiretroviral therapy. So uh, the reason for us attending this course is because we deal with vast amounts of data and uh, we just want to know how to better manage that to get the most effective results from it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sultana. I'm also part of the VUVAM study with UKZN and Harvard College. And we also want to understand better ways of using that data and making it easier for us to do our jobs. Thank you. I'm Ayeni Benjamin, discipline of social work. I'm working on uh, poverty and specific early impairment. And the essence of it is just to understand how to uh, analyze data and go together as far as this group is concerned. And also, the purpose of coming here basically is to see uh, if I gain a uh, kind of uh, knowledge regarding how to actually conduct the kind of you know, interview. People that are uh, hearing impaired. To make sure that to make my story be valid and at the same time to you know network with other like minded people here and run my cake in program. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is uh, Beatrice. We are trying to say it's French name. So it's a bit short and English better or better. Any you can call me, it's fine. Um, I'm a PhD <coughs> candidate. In social science. Um, I'm planning to uh, do my research with uh, quantitative data analysis, but I don't have more ideas on how to analyze with quantitative data. I have been using uh, in my master's with uh, qualitative data analysis. So today I just come to learn more um, how to analyze with quantitative data. Good morning everyone, um, my name is Kerry, I work in the School of Accounting, Economics and Finance and neural networking is one of those avenues where research is developing quite rapidly in the field of finance and so I'm just here to try and learn a bit more about it and see how I can apply within my own field. Hi, I'm uh, Chris Sang, I work for a company called uh, Libra from the UK ZN. Um, I'm a research assistant. Um, I think to correlate data and how to present it was my issue. Thank you. Uh, you will have noticed wide diversity of interests and disciplinary orientations uh, and expectations. So I think it's, it's fair that we establish from the outset <coughs> that this class is not going to solve your peculiar problem. You're not going to take away a portfolio of solutions or a particular solutions, rather you take away a portfolio of possible solutions. So, um, in order to, to get a clearer sense of your particular problem, 
Let's spend the next hour or so framing the question, getting to the root of what it is, is exactly that you are attempting to resolve through this class. And you're going to tell us a story, literally. So if you can write down or type down the following. Once upon a time, Sorry, I had that on the slide, but my machine decided to die on me. Decided to update on you. Decided to update on me in the most inopportune moment. Once upon a time, I thought, and use the slash, thought, believed, and you're going to leave the space for your response. The next line. And then I heard slash read slash noted that and put a couple of dots. And then in the next line, and now what I really want to know is, okay folks, uh, so for the next few minutes, you're free to work individually, or in groups, pairs, <coughs> around the table, uh, basically tell us that story. Can you do that? Are you okay with that task? Yeah. Sounds frivolous, I know. But uh, it can be quite an interesting challenge in gathering your thoughts. Yes, is this true? Is this true? Is this true? Is this true? Are you with us in med school? Yeah. Oh, how nice. Okay. We're in the same building. He's on the ground floor. Special name. Yeah. But you're backing to analyze it as. Yeah, to say the, the least, and that's what I need to come here and try and sort out. Yeah, incomprehensible. To me, say that. To, to me. me. Yeah. That makes it more specific. Okay, folks, can we come together? It seems like most of you have crafted the narrative, so to speak. Um, now, the reason we're asking you to tell your story, uh, because stories are by nature imperfect, and we want you to tell us the story with its imp imperfections, and as we progress through the day, the story will become a coherent narrative, which then will form the thread, which will allow you to acquire the tools you need to get to the destination. Okay, so can we have a volunteer to start? No volunteers. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, my name's Kerry. Uh, just using the framework that you've given us, so once I thought or sort of the background is that in finance, one of the things we spend a lot of time worrying about is risk. And as you start moving forward in your understanding of the field of finance, you do spend a lot of time learning how to measure risk and how to estimate risk and how to forecast risk. And it's actually a very complex system. And more to that, risk then ends up being an input into several other things that we do. So where I'm at now, or what I'm really wanting to know now is how to best be able to measure and forecast our risk measures and um, especially because in the modern markets where we have things like high frequency trading, so these enormous data sets reflecting real trade, um, and trading algorithms where trading is moving from a human action to a computer action, being able to speak to these estimates in that sort of framework. Okay, just uh, two things to note here. One, as, as you tell your story, the, your mentors and coaches 
who will want to ask you questions for further clarification. And then, please listen carefully, uh, because what you hear will help you determine how you cluster yourselves in activity groups. Uh, we're not putting any rules down as to how you should do that. In the first instance, we'd like some sort of self-selection. If, if you're unable to make those selections by the end of the day, then we make some recommendations for where we think you, you should be clustered. Thank you, Kerry, for that. Uh, can we have another volunteer? I'll just read what I wrote. Once upon a time, I, I thought that Fortran program, programming and various simple statistics were adequate tools to assess the impacts of climate change on agricultural and hydrological resources. And then I heard that other more powerful tools exist to mine data such as artificial intelligence and neural networks. And now I really want to know is how these new tools work and possibly how to apply them to my existing data sets. Yeah, uh, this is my story. Once upon a time, I thought to believe that poverty was limited to insufficient income. Then I had read, noticed that poverty is multidimensional. And now what I really want to know is how the poor are denied access to resources or decisions that will better their lives. So that's just my storyline. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. I'm Edith Young Kang uh, from anatomy department. Once upon a time, I thought anatomy was just about the study of the human body and getting to know about the parts there in the organs. Then I realized that uh, it was more interesting than that. Uh, it encompassed um, topics like infertility, neuroscience, anthropometry. I decided to go down into infertility and getting to understand what really causes infertility to humans. Why would humans be infertile? And uh, what are the possible means of solving these problems in fertility? Thank you. Uh, once upon a time, I thought or I heard that the curriculum that we offer at the University of KwaZulu-Natal was reflective of the needs of society and the sector in which my discipline, which is performing arts, actually engages. And, um, and then I heard, I noted that, that there were several claims that were being made by university management about the staff and the students itself. And what the claims that, were, that I felt were justified, but I could not find information. And now, what I really want to know are what are the facts that underpin these claims that were made and the perceptions that exist amongst the staff and the students. Chats, you just want to stay with that, the claims and perceptions related to? The relevance of the curriculum. Oh, the relevance of the curriculum. And uh -huh. the throughput of, of, of students with the, the relevance to the sector. And your hunch hypothesis is? My hypothesis is that there is a perception among staff about what the industry wants, ah, okay. but there's a reality at what exists out there which is not being taken care of. So I'm trying to look at where is this mismatch. Okay, good. Okay, so um, once upon a time, I believed that um, UKZN's commitment to transformation translated into increasing access of students from communities that were previously marginalized from entrance into higher education institutions. And so the selection and admission uh, criteria into the MBCH program at the medical school was refashioned to, um, to allow for increased access and then is guided by particular quotas that are race-based. And uh, after, uh, amongst that, 28% of new admissions are reserved for students from quintile one and two schools. So for the mentors, those are students attending resource-constrained schools located in uh, poorer communities within the province. Then I heard amongst staff and students that the selection criteria created wide variability among students in the program. That's evidenced by the demographic profile, the socioeconomic status, metric entrance scores, and academic ability, factors that influence motivation and psychosocial stresses. And now what I really want to know is the throughput and performance of students over the past six years, that's from 2011 to 2016, who have entered the program with the lower range of metric entrance scores and who have attended schools 
um, classified as quintile one and two. Mm, very interesting. Uh, we base, to a large extent, our selection criteria on the quintile ranking. And that determines how, what students, where the students are placed and where they are placed. And Vic conducted a study last year on all three and four year degree programs in the university, excluding MBCHP, unfortunately, and found that on admission, quintile ranking has some degree of significance. But in subsequent years, that, that significance diminishes, and that students are able to catch up, if you like, and recover, and proceed on par with their peers from different quintile rankings. Those who survive. Those who persist, yeah. yeah. Those who persist. Now that is very significant for your interest. We, you know, there's, there's a kind of common sense around what constitutes that group of, of students from those quintiles and their capacity to succeed. And we need to challenge those assumptions. Yes. My name is Patrick, Patrick Hosia. Once upon a time, I thought, believed that greenhouse gases, DOG gases, affect, is changing the world climate alone. Then I, re, I, I read that the, change, the, change, the changes in climate change will affect natural resources leading to competition. Now I want to know how climate change effect on water will propel conflict as a coping strategy. My name is Ephraim Zulu, and my story is once upon a time, I thought, believed that merely repeating a lesson, a topic, or information, at least a few times, would lead students to learning and understanding. And then I read and noted that there are several factors required for students to learn and understand. And now what I really want to know is what are the important factors necessary for effective learning and understanding. Once a time I thought and believed that mm -hmm. data analytics was only for statisticians. And then I heard and read that an analytics includes a field of learning at analytics, which academics can undertake themselves, especially with the vast amount of student data that we collect in our modules. So now what I really want to know is how to perform these learning analytics on both existing data sets as well as data sets which can be accessed through dashboards to better support the learning process for our students. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Martins. Once upon a time, I grew up to think that the animals that God has created in the world was for us to eat the one you can eat and then uh, just view the way others live. But as time goes on, I heard and read and also carry out some work and discover that animals, <clears throat> animals we have around us, they are very intelligent and um, they, they are faced with challenges in life. And you see them solving the problems without guidance, without coordinator, and they come out with you know, sophisticated solutions to complex problems. So what I'm here to uh, learn now, to know, is to have some idea about the um, data mining techniques and see how I can you know, infuse into these techniques or probably come up with a model you know, studying some of these animals around us, for example, like the ants, the birds, and even the monkeys, and then apply their strategy in, you know, mining some data as it cut across uh, different phases of life, whether medicine or engineering and the likes. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Hi, Lydia. Um, once upon a time, I thought and believed that people who are infected with HIV cannot live long and productive lives. And then I heard and noted that there are various advances in medicine which have led to the development of antiretroviral therapy for patients with HIV. And now what I really want to know is, with the advances in medicine, will HIV-positive patients be able to live healthy and happy lives for a longer period than expected? What 
the point of time, I believe that if people got infected with HIV, they would immediately die. Then I read that you can only die if you do not take your antiretroviral medication. And now what I really want to know is, does this guarantee life, knowing that some patients with HIV have become drug resistant, or is this just a dead end road? Once upon a time, I used to uh, thought and I believe that uh, extinct rate uh, fluctuations actually uh, matters uh, in whichever country you are looking at, whether developed economy or developing uh, economy. But having read through the empirics, I found out, and it's noted now, that uh, the pass-through of exchange rate differs from nation to, to nation, dep depending on their economic characteristics, depending on their political factors and other factors that affect uh, development. Then now what I'm trying to do from the empirics that I found out was that I want to know the, whether uh, the short-run and long-run dynamics in this uh, pass-through really matters in these uh, various economies. Also, I also want to know uh, the short-run and long-run uh, uh, asymmetry uh, among the different uh, economic systems, whether uh, there is consistency or not. Also, I want to know the, whether uh, this uh, exchange rate pass-through actually uh, uh, respond to structural breaks depending on the fluctuations of the oil prices as an intera interactive uh, variables among uh, these uh, various uh, economies. So these are the things that I expect to know from this uh, side. Thank you. Once upon a time, I thought, believed that the honor students are comfortable with the available resources in the university, judging from the fact that they've been in the university for three years and above now. Then I heard, read, noted that there exist capacity constraint issues of administrative staff, lack of institutional resources and technological problems. And now what I really want to know is how these issues will affect or influence the honor student's throughput quality and the effects of internal operation processes in assessing the interface between program capacity and the magnitude of demand. Okay, that's great. Um, so, Vic, Andir, Colin, any further probes for clarification? So, we, 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 for the first part, we're going to sort of play it by ear, as they say, to get a sense of how um, we can develop working groups. 